Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review here at the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we are going to be looking at Casio's CDP S350. It is a portable 88 note weighted piano with auto accompaniment, hundreds and hundreds of onboard sounds and it's battery operated. Very cool. Uh, it's also quite new to the market. It's the first time we've ever had a chance to take a look. So we hope you enjoy. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, we would really appreciate if you did subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you can come back and watch other videos as we are constantly producing new material. So without further ado, let's get started with the CDP S350 right away. So let's start with the sound on this brand new CDP S350. This is a fairly new unit from Casio and it's the first one I've had a chance to play. Uh, they just started to creep into various markets around the world just a couple of months ago. It's the first chance we've really had a chance to get in front of it. And this replaces in a lot of ways uh, Casio's PX160. Uh, the PX160, I don't think it can be really understated the influence and the impact that that instrument had on the entry level digital piano market. It was one of those uh, sort of kick in the pants from uh, an unexpected competitor, uh, sort of in the way that Hyundai and Kia have done with a few models over the years to uh, you know, Honda and Toyota. Uh, that just reminded uh, the whole world that there was still innovation that was left to do, that there was still new uh, kind of value points that were left to be uh, you know, seen and, and tackled. And the PX160 came in uh, around the 650 Canadian mark, 499 US I think was, was really where it, it debuted. And there was not a lot of great stuff in the 88 note weighted market prior uh, to this instrument. It was kind of a, a, a zone uh, that for sure Kawhi and Roland had pretty much entirely ignored uh, because the expectation by the vast majority of the marketplace was they weren't even looking for or expecting a decent digital weighted 88 note piano down in the price range. Well, here came the PX160 and it just blew it out of the water. It had decent speakers on it. Uh, the piano tone was actually pretty, uh, uh, quite convincing, especially if you're using headphones. The, re the reverb engine on it was quite decent. Uh, and uh, one of the things that was most remarkable to me was the action. The action on that instrument played more like a $1,000 uh, instrument. It, it had a triple sensor on it. Uh, it had uh, you know, really great texture. It was weighted properly. It was the first generation of that type of uh, action for, for Casio. So yes, there were some growing pains. They've made improvements on it, but it did really uh, redefine what should have been possible in that price range for buyers. And it wasn't that long after that that all of a sudden Roland came out with their FP10. Uh, Yamaha had refreshed their entry into that market really with the P45. Um, that that uh, you know delivered I think a better bang for the buck and, and got into that price range and competed for the Casio. This in a lot of ways carries that mantle forward for Casio um, and because the PX160 is now discontinued and we are into the CDP S350. This is a complete rethink. It's a total redesign of what uh, the PX160 was. In fact in some ways, the control interface that you see on the PX770 has more in common with the, the PX160 than this does. This is like a totally new uh, style of control interface for Casio, or at least as far as I know it is. I haven't seen anything like this with the LCD screen and the way it's laid out. Um, I had to look a couple of things up, but for the most part, it was fairly intuitive. Uh, and so let's start with the sound. First of all, this has been, uh, they have really, I think, dispensed with the notion that they're trying to create uh, some sort of a home, uh, a home unit that looks like a real digital piano with triple pedals uh, in this price range, or at least this is certainly what it feels like. I think they realize that for the most part, people in that price range are looking for something uh, that's useful, that's light, 
probably something that's portable uh, and where you want the majority of that spend going towards guts and quality uh, of the, the musical um, uh, quality, part quality, uh, versus having too much money go into cabinetry, triple pedal, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, so in the Canadian market, uh, this instrument is selling for around $750. So I imagine that this is probably something in around five, 600 bucks uh, down in the States for those uh, of us south of the border who are watching this um, or around the world. Hello, by the way. So from a tone standpoint, this instrument produces, uh, it's a pair of eight watt speakers uh, and I've uh, cranked it all the way up to the very, very maximum uh, on its most uh, boisterous piano patch. Uh, and even up in the treble, there's only a very, very slight level of distortion. And I would say through the most part of the instrument, even on max volume, this thing doesn't really break up. And you get the sweetest, roundest tone anywhere from about one quarter to about three quarters volume, which is pretty good, again, given the price point and given the size of the speakers. Uh, this instrument is equipped with battery power, so you can take this on the road even without uh, any sort of uh, AC power source. Uh, and so to get the kind of punch that you're able to get out of those two speakers, um, with with batteries uh, on an instrument that you can throw under your arm pretty easily is pretty cool. It just means that this is actually a great uh, portable musical partner, uh, perfect for taking on road trips, uh, taking uh, into the park for an afternoon of writing or, or anything uh, like that of the sort. I, I was really quite impressed with what this is able to deliver uh, for the price. Certainly it's on par with the quality of the tone that you are going to get out of, say, the Yamaha or the Roland in a similar kind of price range. Uh, and the one thing that is, uh, goes beyond that is that the quality of the piano sample, uh, I would say, is uh, probably richer and a little more complex uh, than what I'm used to out of this price range as well. And here is a quick sample of it. Lot of just B flat triads. Why not? Sometimes it works. Uh, so that's the grand piano sound that you just heard. Casio doesn't specifically say, I think. I think this is the same action that you find on the PXS1000, I think. Of course, Casio, if you're out there, you can always update me in the comments if that is incorrect. They keep it a little bit vague. They say it's an all new action design, um, but it feels suspiciously like the same one that's on the PXS1000. Uh, they, can, uh, they can update me on that, um, which means... It feels pretty good. Um, getting back to the tone, because uh, that is the first part that I really always like to uh, deal with and talk about. Um, one of the biggest specs that jumps out uh, at you as you are reading through the information on this is the fact that it has hundreds and hundreds of onboard sounds. And that's not just general MIDI 2 sounds. These are uh, pretty high quality uh, sounds that they've got loaded in here. And you're able to access them in a nice and organized way. So there's several modes that you can use this instrument in. Uh, you can uh, basically, there's a tone button that allows you to uh, pick the various sounds that you're gonna be playing it with. There's a rhythm, there's a song bank, and for every one of those, there's a category button that allows you to better navigate through the whole sea of things. So if I pick tone, that's what I'm on right now, and then I hit category, uh, you're gonna see uh, the piano category, grand piano, bright piano, it, you know, yada, yada, yada. 
And then the next category is e-piano, next piano is organ, accordion, guitar. That's a pretty good sample. Aha. With some velocity triggers in there. some bass, some strings. Those are a little bit woofy for my liking. It's a bit nicer. My favorite so far, that's bright strings. And just like most other digital pianos, you can layer it. This has uh, both uh, two upper uh, layers that you can do, uh, but you can also do a split and layer at the same time. So your left hand has one tone and your right hand actually has two tones layered. So kind of, it's like a triple layer, but sort of not, sort of yes. Uh, what other categories do we have on here? Brass. Not bad. Some very enthusiastic uh, vibrato on there. Some good old synth brass. So quite a few brass in there, uh, reed. Yeah, I mean. Honestly, especially with some of those reeds and some of those uh, guitars, uh, these aren't just passable. I would say these are some of the best keyboard loaded into a keyboard uh, sample quality that I've heard in anything outside of a full workstation. This is really quite impressive. And of course, helping with all of those is the ability to register some, uh, uh, you know, presets for easy recall. Because I know some professional players who would probably lug this along as possibly an 88 note controller uh, and some easy, you know, main piano sounds to keep cost down and just get a, you know, an inexpensive portable rig uh, for gigging whenever gigging comes back because whenever we're filming this still in the middle of the whole COVID thing. So perhaps uh, at some point we'll be back to playing music live. Um, so we've got a huge amount of sounds and as you're hearing just a sample, cause there's no way we can go through, you know, 400 sounds on here. The quality of those sounds is quite impressive uh, right from the acoustic sound all the way up. 
Uh, one of the limiting factors here is that the polyphony is down to 64, and I have a feeling that's because uh, each of the patches is using up a good amount of processing, you know, juice, processing bandwidth. And so uh, having too much of that happening simultaneously is going to be a little bit tricky for whatever, uh, you know, the, uh, the overall processing bandwidth is inside this machine. So I could see 64 being used up pretty quickly as soon as you start using some recording. Uh, that's definitely one of the weak spots of the instrument if I had to identify one. Um, but certainly this two, so far, the two strong points here is that the speakers actually put out a pretty big uh, kick for something that's portable, battery operated, and that the quantity and quality of the tones on here is quite impressive. Um, I think uh, the other functions uh, that we're gonna talk about uh, that sort of have to do with tone, but overall functionality on, on this. Another really fun part of this keyboard is the auto accompaniment. And there's a few different parts to the auto, auto accompaniment system. There's the rhythm only part, and you can access that by just hitting the rhythm button. Uh, and that is going to allow you uh, to basically access um, all of the different categories of rhythm. And so you've got uh, 16 beat, four rock, dance, jazz, all this kind of stuff. Uh, let's go jazz. And then there are all sorts of, I'll play it so you can hear it. You've got the jazz. Uh, you can tempo, you can tap the tempo in, so, which is a really handy feature. And then the second part of this uh, would be the auto accompaniment, um, the, the harmonic part. So in other words, uh, like a harmonic uh, backing instrument plus a bass. And you can access that by pressing the accompaniment key. And that is going to let you pretty much, as soon as we hit a chord, it's just gonna do its thing. And your left hand below a certain split point is going to control the harmonic motion. And then there are other buttons that allow you to segue between uh, variations in that. So if we go, we're going to do variation. Uh, so that is the, oh, so that's the rhythm and accompaniment portion of the instrument. There's also the ability to play it in duet mode, which is really easy to access. So you can have that be uh, kind of two people playing a duet at the same time. Uh, obviously you can get it back to an acoustic piano sound uh, pretty easily. Uh, Uh, and then back again. There's also a recorder function on here as well, uh, which uh, lets you do, I think, five or six tracks. And so uh, 
this gives you a little bit of everything. It, it, for somebody who is using this uh, to accompany uh, a singer, to accompany themselves uh, in a portable, low-cost uh, instrument that sounds good enough to be used in some professional settings, this is a really quite a nice combination of, of features. Uh, where this is going to become a bit of a debate for people is, is this an instrument that you would want to have somebody start learning piano on because there's lots of functions here that make sense for people who are already uh, players who already know what they're looking for may have a need for a portable instrument may have a need for some sort of a low-cost gig alternative uh, or a rehearsal instrument or anything like that I see all of that as an instrument for somebody just starting out this would be a, a fairly complicated instrument to learn how to use and in that regard I think Casio's PXS 1000 is probably a better fit or 3000 is even uh, you know in my opinion a better value than the 1000 uh, or something like a Roland FP 10 very easy to use where the focus is really on the action uh, where say a classical teacher would want it for an early student so I, I'm not sure that this is an instrument for absolutely all players in all contexts in every single setting you could imagine uh, in this price range but it definitely does deliver a really huge punch and it's a cool combination of features um, but like I said I think this almost feels as though it's geared more towards people who already have some type of piano experience than it is geared towards uh, complete beginners. Having said that, for a beginner, if you were a young beginner and you had an adult to show you how to navigate this, I could still see it working. It's not like this is uh, you know, inappropriate uh, for somebody just starting out. It just, the control interface definitely uh, is yeah it's it's focused towards somebody who is is probably an older learner or somebody who already has experience with piano um, this works as well with the Cordana app uh, and there's two ways that the Cordana app um, works it's kind of an interesting uh, setup one way uh, that it uses an audio cable to deliver data back and forth and then the other way is more a USB where the USB is uh, kind of just delivering uh, MIDI information. So um, I've been experimenting with the Cordana app with the uh, MIDI cable connection. It's not, it doesn't sound like it's nearly as useful as when you use it with an audio cable. The trouble is I have an iPhone. There is no audio cable jack with the iPhone. Uh, I know you can use it with that adapter, but if you want to be using, uh, have it plugged into USB at the same time, you're a little bit out of luck. So uh, or I guess there is an adapter that would split it off and still give you the data. So maybe I spoke too soon. There is probably a way to accomplish that if you, uh, if you really wanted to. Anyway, uh, that was really a, a fairly large discussion on all of the different functions that it has uh, that involve tone. We're going to take a quick break, put up those specs, and be back and quickly discuss the action uh, and some of the other non-musical features of the instrument. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for the CDP S350 uh, Casio review. We'll be back in just a second. All right, so let's talk about the action now. I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, my impression is that this is the same action that they're using in some of the other uh, PX. They describe it as a brand new action for the S350. It seems pretty similar, but all Casio actions uh, in their PX line and their CDP line, or at least this particular one, have a few things in common, and they're worth pointing out. One of them is the exaggerated textures that they use on the keys, because this is uh, a little uncommon. It's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's just a bit, uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, and it's something that if you have an opportunity to play it in a store and you already have some experience on a piano, it would be worth doing just to make sure that it doesn't turn you off. If you don't have any experience on piano, there's a very good chance that you're not going to notice and or care. One of the things that I do uh, notice, uh, particularly about the black keys on some of these new Casios, is until you've had a chance to play them in for an hour or two, the black key does come, uh, come off as a lot slipperier than you'd probably like it to be. As soon as you start to get a little bit of hand oil on those black keys, they uh, settle right into the appropriate level of grip, uh, shall we say, 
and it, it stops being an issue. But if you play this and it's right out of the box and you're thinking, wow, that black key is a little bit slippery, trust me, it gets a lot better uh, very, very quickly as soon as you get some of your hands all over it. But uh, it could be a little bit disconcerting uh, right off the hop. White keys feel great, uh, and in terms of the weighting of the keys, I'd say that they feel a little bit lighter generally than what you would see out of a comparable Roland, for example. I know the PHA4 action is going to feel a little heavier than this. And actually, it doesn't feel that dissimilar to the Yamaha GHS action, with the exception of the texture. The GHS action uh, is shiny white plastic, and I think there's a very, very slight uh, texture on the black key on the GHS, uh, like as in what's on the P45 or the, or the P125. So in that regard, I guess it fixes the one thing about the GHS that sometimes bothers me, which is that the keys are so grippy uh, that playing uh, in certain styles uh, becomes a little bit problematic. This uh, kind of gives you the right level of slip and grip uh, on those keys. Nothing fancy like a triple sensor on these instruments. I don't think uh, they were hoping that this would be used for high level recording or anything like that or high level classical. So uh, usually if those two things aren't factors, the triple sensor is not as big a deal. Uh, and certainly they don't advertise it as a triple sensor. Um, other things, this instrument comes with one of those small little plastic uh, pedals. You can upgrade that. I would say if you're going to be playing in one place in a stationary way for a long time, you're probably going to want to upgrade the pedal from, uh, from the little plastic switch. Uh, this doesn't have any audio outputs other than the headphone jack, uh, but it's got the headphone jack. You can use it. It's one of the 3.5 mil jacks. If you need to put this out to an amplifier, you're going to have to get yourself uh, an adapter just as we are doing uh, here for uh, the review. And unlike the PX160, this is not available with sort of an integrated stand with the triple pedal system. Uh, this really is built to be a slab unit just as you are seeing it here. So I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about this CDPS350. It's a really unique combination of features for this price point. It's very unusual to get something with a decent weighted 88 note action with a really comprehensive set of onboard sounds that are at that quality that has uh, the auto accompaniment and rhythms uh, in there. Uh, it's got a pretty extensive uh, you know, repertoire of songs uh, that can work as a part of a lesson system. And we didn't really cover that much uh, in there, but it's, it's certainly in there. Uh, and then the uh, app that you're able to use along with that, the, the Cordana uh, app. So all of those things uh, together make this uh, an interesting choice. I think there's less of an emphasis on having the action be uh, super, super authentic. It's a little lighter than what I would prefer, um, but it still feels pretty good to play, especially for the majority of casual playing, pop playing. You're not going to have any issue with that uh, whatsoever. And I do like the fact that even though on paper the speakers uh, aren't super, super powerful, you get a lot of bang for your buck uh, for those speakers, especially given they can be battery powered and you can untangle yourself from all cables and just take this to a park and write. Hope you've enjoyed the review, but please let me know what you thought. Uh, add comments, add anything else about the instrument that you think that would be helpful to the rest of the community. And if you have not done so yet, we would really appreciate if you also subscribed. Uh, we'd love to have you join a part of our ever-growing community of music lovers from all around the world. We've got subscribers from the United States, from Canada, from Britain, 
uh, from Australia, India. Uh, we know we've got some from uh, Korea I've seen in the subscriber list pop up. Uh, like just all over the world. It's so fun to connect with people everywhere who have a mutual love, which is making music and usually on a piano. So we will see you back for more videos in the future. My name is Stu Harrison. This is Miriam Pianos on YouTube. Take care and have a great day.